Hi, I am Malcolm Sen. I uh, am going to blend my course on climate change and narrative. Climate change is a multi-generational, multi-scalar uh, issue, but it is often dealt with uh, using scales that are really uh, reductive. We argue that we need a really good story about climate change uh, that help us to critique some of the policy narratives, some of the political narratives, uh, and indeed some of the scientific discourses, which make climate change seem manageable. Uh, indeed, to manage climate change uh, requires a complete overhaul of civilization as we know it. One of the things I'm quite interested in uh, is the potential of the blended classroom to provide expert witness. So I'm looking forward to using a series of podcast lectures which will bring together uh, multiple disciplines and their approach to the climate change question. I have some experience as Trevor said with podcasts, so for um, fall 2016 I'm going to use my existing um, podcast series. Another aspect that I'm looking forward to is the ability of the blended environment to allow students to uh, produce assignments which might capture the geospatial aspect of climate change. Individual projects like textual analysis, which is a kind of traditional model uh, you will often follow in departments of English, will be, I suppose, enhanced uh, through individual projects such as blogs. One of the things to come out of this particular course will be a website. Uh, which would be originally a course website, something like this, for example. My hope is that that kind of a site will ultimately be a UMass-wide site on the environmental humanities. This is something that I'm working on separately. Let me know. Thank you. Alright. <laughs> so this course the website actually is uh, much wider in scope in that it is um, the, the home page is t about the environmental humanities and an introduction to what that might be. Um, so this is content that was written specifically uh, for this. There seems to be a lot of interest in this in my university but also across the five colleges I think as well. Um, and whereas we have dedicated schools for sustainability or something like that, we don't actually have something within the disciplines of the humanities that brings together all of these varied research interests, which nonetheless are all environmental. Students um, and other collaborators will need to log in to access certain parts of this course, um, uh, especially when it comes to course content, etc. And what you will be brought to are the specific kind of aspects um, of, of the course. So this particular course that I'm doing is the, the framing, as I said, was 20th century Irish literature through which we are addressing questions of climate change and narrative. Right. So there's a lot of course materials here and course documents, for example. So the broad vision obviously did not change. Um, um, there were a couple of things that I wanted to inculcate. One was uh, using podcasts to give students the ability to listen to expert witnesses outside of literary study. The podcast section is very interesting. Uh, what we have here are links to a podcast series I did uh, previously through University College Dublin and for the time being students are able to access them, the certain podcasts that are relevant to their course um, through this web page. When students are assigned a critical text to read, um, there are certain ways that you can kind of assess that learning. Those assessments um, have to change a little bit when it comes to podcasts, for example, right? Um, the flexibility in that learning process generates ideas 
that may not immediately be within the purview of the course, but are still relevant. So the students really responded to the podcast, but it is not something that I could control uh, or kind of assess uh, immediately. But of course, in class discussions, those ideas uh, were very much prevalent and, and very important. What the website also has is very crucially a terminology section. Uh, and if you were to click on this now, you will see that it brings us to Sweden's KTH University's video dictionary. Now this is something that the students are also working on themselves um, as digital reflections. So some of my students are writing about the word animal or the word landscape or the word nuclear, um, building on uh, these kinds of resources and their reflections are going to be a part of a resource then of terminology used for the environmental humanities. Podcasts, video casts, video dictionaries that I've utilized for this course are easy means of access to very complex ideas and vocabularies. Um, and students are suddenly able to understand concepts and ideas um, which they wouldn't have if they were reading a textbook on geology, for example, or a textbook on environmental history. Another aspect that I was hoping to bring to this course was um, mapping and timeline tools. Um, I had initially thought that students might be able to create their own personal maps about specific locations that they're reading about. Well, there were technological challenges um, and there were also uh, challenges in, in terms of time. How much time am I willing to devote teaching them how to um, utilize um, mapping tools, using timeline tools uh, on, the, on the web? Now, there are uh, tools which are very easy to use but not every student is technologically savvy. I suppose one challenge that perhaps all blended learning environments might face is the reticence on the part of students to use technology, which might sound surprising, but it is actually um, very much prevalent, right? Not everybody in your class is uh, comfortable with using technology especially when it comes to assignments through technology. Because I was trying out something new, um, quite deliberately calling the course blended, um, explaining what that might mean to students at the very start of the course, I decided it was a good time to actually have um, a kind of a third party presence um, and a review, right, which I initiated through the faculty development um, office in UMass. So we had a teaching professional come in and have a conversation with the students um, and it was overwhelmingly positive. What students noted was that when they signed up for a course they hadn't really acknowledged the fact that okay look there are other environmental aspects to this which are not immediately within the purview of Irish literature. So they were pleasantly surprised. Um, they felt there was a kind of a, a sense of immediacy and importance to this. That was uh, something that actually I hadn't fully expected. I mean there I was expecting a little bit of resistance um, as is normal, right? Um, and of course there was a little bit of resistance at the start but, but that was very quickly addressed and everybody came on board. I was very lucky to actually have these 25 students in my class totally energized by the topic. Um, so much so that on days when they may not have been attending some of the other courses that they're supposed to attend in UMass, they were always present for my class, which, which, was, a, which was a good sign. Well, my first thing would be plan rigorously, dream big, but act small. Um, I think it is important to have kind of a, uh, a kind of a big 
notion behind the project, but um, the steps, I think, should be small and tiny because there are all kinds of challenges that, that might crop up that you're not actually expecting. Um, I would, the other thing I would say is also be flexible uh, about a blended learning project. Um, um, respond to students actually who are not that comfortable using technology.